which have a lower third, a menu, and an open. Okay, you could just buy motion for that and nothing else. I just want to show you how to get it into Final Cut. You select one of them. Here you choose open a copy because we don't want to affect the original one that's there. And there it is. Let's play it. I'll hit Shift Z to fit it to the window. And by the way, you might see this text looks kind of soft here, but that's just because our render quality is set to normal. If we set it to best, it'll be nice and crisp. Okay, that just allows for a little faster playback. You can use normal most of the time unless your text is very large like this. But let's play through it once so you can see uh, what this looks like. We'll see what kind of playback I get while we're doing screen capture. It's not very happy with that. through once so we can see what it looks like. So there's a lot. There's a lot to this guy, right? It's a fairly, <laughs> lot of, a lot of text. You really got a lot to say, okay? It plays faster than, you know, once it plays real time. But so here, I want to see this in Final Cut. All we need to do is go into the file menu and choose publish template, all right? And this is true of any motion project that is not already a title effect transistor gener generator. Like you open your motion for projects, you can do this exact same thing any old Motion 4 projects. I'm going to choose Publish Template, and I get this little interface up here, and I'm going to call this guy, um, I'm going to call it Snap Open, because that's what the name of it is here. And then I am going to give it a category, a new category called uh, Motion 4 Templates. Because that's really what it is. And then for a theme, I'm going to give it a theme in a minute here. Uh, I've actually created one, but let's go ahead and just do it again. Snap. Well, you can just create it. I actually have it in here. I meant to delete that. Sorry. And the key here is to click this checkbox, Publish as Final Cut Generator. If you don't, it will show up in Motion's project browser, but it will not show, show up in Final Cut Pro. So that's really the key. You just click that little guy right there. I'll click Publish. I'm also not going to do a preview movie just so we don't have to watch it render that. Uh, it already exists. I'll replace it. Let me go back over to Final Cut, and here is our new Snap category, and there's our Snap Open. All right, so let's bring that in. Come on, baby. There we go. W to wedge that guy in, beginning there, and uh, we've got the whole template. Here we go, I'm going to shift Z to fit it to the window. And I'll select the template. And there's so much text flying around the screen, it'd be very hard to select it, depending on the frame you're on. So it gives you these boxes here. So I'm just going to double click these boxes. We'll see how painful this is. Uh, if I go to the text tab, you can see what each of these are. So this one here is title information one. And I'll just call this LAFCP user group. Okay, and this one is title information two. I'll call this Wednesday. This one is title. I'll call this motion five. And then last one, subtitle, I'll call and FCPX. Okay. So, let me just play that through. And immediately I've got a nice template inside of Final Cut from Motion. <laughs> Is it that funny? It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well there's, there's eight of these and each one has three, so that's 24 different things. And by default, uh, they're perfectly you know, workable as they are. They're not rigged in any way. In other words, let me go over here to the last one. If I select it and go to the generator tab, there are no published parameters. So, but you can just stop there and you've got a workable template and you can put all of those templates into motion, into Final Cut for you. But what if you wanted to go a little further? Like what if you wanted to change the colors on this? I just want to show you how to do that. 
I'm going to go back to uh, motion. Now this one hasn't been rigged already, so there's not a nice little place to go where all those color walls are. But we can just publish the colors that are in here, and it's super easy to do. So you, all you have to do is do this one little thing, and you're good to go. The thing is we want to select everything that has a color and publish that color. Now there's stuff all over the place here, and every different frame has something else in it, but I'm here near the end, and I've got this blue and white. Like, I don't want to dig through all these groups to find the layers and try to figure out what they are. I don't have to. You just need to know the X key, like Fanuka Pro 10, the X key. You hit the X key, and that's what does what's called expose in motion. Just like expose in the finder, it spreads out all the layers at the current playhead location so you can see them all. Like, aha, okay, well, I want this thing. So I'll select that circle, and it pops open the group and shows you that layer and selects it. So you're done. You didn't have to dig around for it. So now we'll go to the inspector. Yay! All right. <laughs> so now if I go to the inspector, there it is. It's called fill color. Let me zoom up a little here. So what I'm going to do, there's a little downward arrow that appears just when you move over it. Otherwise, you don't see it. A little downward arrow. This is called the animation menu. If I click on it, there's an option to publish. So I'm going to publish that guy. Okay? And then while I'm here, I'll go ahead. I can see another one. I could use expose again, but I'll just do this quickly here. I'll publish that. And then, uh, looks like there's one in here too. And I'll publish this guy. Publish those two. And you can see this is pretty quick. Uh, you can use expose to find them or once you kind of get into the folder structure, you can publish them pretty quickly. Uh, you cannot publish multiple uh, of the same parameter, multiple layers with the same parameter at the same time. Uh, you can set keyframes on multiple layers for the same parameter at the same time, but you can't publish them at the same time, unfortunately. Uh, luckily, you don't have to watch this too long, but I do want to change all of them just to show you, you know, not do this sort of half-baked thing, but the whole thing here, because it's really not bad. That one, and then this one. And then this one. And I think there's a little one hiding back there. Uh, publish. OK. Now, we're done. OK? I'm going to say, there's a place you can go check this out. There's other things you can There's all kind of other things you do. I don't care. I'm just showing you the quick and dirty that you want to be able to change the colors of this thing in Final Cut. I'm done. I hit Command S to save. And uh, just thinking about it. There we go. I'm going to go back to Final Cut. And I'm going to take, remember it changes the one in the browser, so I'm going to take the browser version, I'm going to drag it over the existing version in the timeline, and choose replace. And again, I'm running the screen capture software, so it's definitely uh, slowing things down a little bit here. Select it. And now if we go to the generator, just give this a minute to update. All right, it's not giving me any love. If you want to turn it off. Yeah, let me just check one more time, see if we can get by. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to select the project. It's at the top of the layers list. Go to the inspector, and for some reason we don't have anything. So what I'm going to do is no problem. I'm just going to show you the last thing here. And it may be because I didn't choose open an editor first when I did this. I just went right to the motion project. So I'm just going to publish this guy. And I'm going to hit X again. It's already selected. And I'm going to publish this guy. There they're published. They're in my published parameters list here. Save it. Go back to Final Cut. Replace it. Select it. And there's my published parameters. Okay, I just got two of them in here. But now I can change these to anything I want directly. And it's a little different than the other one where we created a theme where you're kind of locked in. But here I can change either of these to, uh, to anything I want directly in Final Cut, and I have really the ultimate level 
of creative control because I can change every single one of these in the whole project. Now I only have those two published colors, but you can see how you can really easy take these templates and do something completely different with them. And by the way, the text color you can always change. You just go to the text tab and you can change it. So uh, a couple of quick and easy things that you can do with motion. And I'm just going to show you one last thing here. And I'll probably use up my time. And I'm going to shift gears a little bit because those are two ways you can modify. You can take an existing effect in Final Cut Pro 10 and you can add a color theme. So you can colorize it how you want to. Or you can take these Motion 4 templates, anything that's in Motion 5 that are templates, and you can publish them to Final Cut. And if you want, you can take them a step further and publish the colors. Now, I'm just going to, this, this thing is so cool, I just have to show you. We'll see what we get here. So I have a, um, I have a green screenshot. This is uh, iJustine. And uh, if I select it and uh, hit V to disable it, you'll see there's a little beat shot underneath it. Okay. Now, Final Cut Pro 10 has a great keyer as opposed to Final Cut Pro 7. The keyer in Final Cut Pro 10 is great. If I go to the effects and go down to keying, there's a keyer, and I'll just double click it to apply it to that clip. Select that clip, and boom. You know, sort of, well, you know, I, <laughs> done, right? Um, and, and it's got a lot of controls. And actually, one thing I advise on this, this is, it first does it automatically. There's two ports to it. There's a core transparency and edge transparency. And by default, it samples automatically and figures out the core automatically. If you want to do manually, don't start mucking around with these controls. Bring the strength to zero. The key tip on this thing is to manually do it. You first bring the strength to zero, which means you want to manually set your key. So you can use this to drag in the areas that are green. You can sample areas that are green to knock them out. And then you can use this guy to refine your edges of your mat. And I'm not going to do a lot on here, but you can just adjust this around and move it to really get a nice key quick. Okay? Um, we can look at the mat, and we can look at the composite. I mean, it's it's pretty good. So you can. There's a couple of things you can hear. I want to show you these. I'm not going to use them, but I want to see where you can take this a little further. So you can fill the holes if there's holes in your mat. Edge you distance spill. This doesn't really have any spill on it. You don't see any magenta on it here, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. But here's the cool thing. If you can't get the result here in Final Cut that you want, you can do a little more with this in motion. For example, right now, you know, she's on this bright background. It really should be flooding around her a little bit. And I really can't do anything about that, right? That bright sun right behind her. But if I go to motion and open this project where I have the same shot in motion. Now, I can't send this to motion, okay, which is what I'd like to do. But if I do the same project in motion, there I have Justine in motion. I'll turn her off and on. You can see the clip behind her. And then if I go to uh, the library, and we wait a minute. Um, we have the exact same filter in motion. Remember, those effects in Final Cut Pro come from motion. But the cool thing is that if I go to, fill, actually, let's do it this way. I'll do the little pop-up menu. Um, keying, keyer. All right, bang. Same thing. Now. If you look at the heads-up display, uh, it looks exactly the same, right? We've got these controls, and, and we can drag the strength lighter down, and we can sample the area of green to build our mat. And you can sample multiple areas. And by the way, you can sample at different frames, and it will keyframe over time automatically. If, you're, if your lighting changes, this thing is really deep. Um, and I'll, I'll sample her hair detail a little bit, just to give a little bit better. Okay, so that's fine, but check this out. If I go to the inspector, which shows me all of the um, tools that are available, in addition to these, we saw up to here in Final Cut, we've got a bunch more controls. And I'm just going to pop this open. I'm not going to do anything in here, but we can actually very precisely control the luma and saturation of the piece being keyed out uh, here by hue and saturation here and luma here. So you can really do very detailed, uh, specific keying, and you can keyframe these over time. Uh, so awesome, but don't need it right now. I'm going to go down to this uh, light wrap. That's what I'm interested in. So I'm going to add some light wrap. I'm going to crank this amount up and give it a minute to kick in here. The amount only goes up to 50 on that slider, but in motion, if you drag in the value field, you can usually go higher. So I'm going to crank that up even higher. And there's an intensity. I'm going to crank that up beyond 100, too. You can generally go over 100. And I don't know if you can see the difference there. We've kind of got a glow around here. Can you see that? 
Okay, so it really helps sell the effect. And it's still, you know, the light's not right for her based on the background where the sun is. I mean, it's, it's still not a, anywhere close to a perfect composition by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, this light wrap really helps sell the effect. Uh, and then you can add, I think I've got a, a color balance filter on here. Um, Motion has this really cool color balance filter that basically allows you to just shadow midtones and highlights like a color corrector three-way. If I select shadows, I've got a color wheel with uh, hue and saturation. This is very much like the three-way color corrector in Final Cut 7 built into motion. All right? So I could color balance to match these shots. I'm out of time, so I'm not going to do it. The other cool thing is you can publish this thing to Final Cut Pro and use this in Final Cut. In fact, um, Steve and I at Ripple Training, we give away a free effect every week, either a title, a transition effect, or generator. And this is one of them we did last week, I think. So um, for me, if I go back to Final Cut and go back to my uh, filters, I've got a set of filters or, who's in here, right? Where is it? Custom, thank you. Custom, uh, there's my garbage mat. Oh, maybe I don't have it in here. No, I have, I have it in ripple effects, actually. I made my own category for it. So uh, there's, see, there's a color balance filter right here. So these are, these are ones that we've given out. Eight point garbage mat, adjustable eight point garbage mat. Be nice to have, right? Fully adjustable eight point garbage mat, split screen, 3D effect. So um, check those out. If you go to at ripple training, just follow us on Twitter and you will uh, be notified when we come out with new ones of those, if you're using Final Cut Pro 10, um, which is an encouragement to try out Final Cut Pro 10 and especially try out Motion. I'm out of time. Thank you.